So let's talk about the Middle East. The chaos isn't stopping and it's very clear that the Arab world is getting very pissed off. Because of America's endless support for Israel, the Middle East is breaking away. 2023, as we all know, is a year where the battle lines have been drawn and I have three updates that show we are never going back to the old world order. The global reset is here, guys. We know the truce between Israel and Hamas is over, but we can also kiss goodbye to a ceasefire because America just won't allow it. America has vetoed another UN security resolution. This time, it is coming from the UAE. This isn't from China. It isn't from Russia. It's from a key US strategic partner. It's almost on the same level as Saudi Arabia. But it gets crazier. The resolution has nearly 100 co-sponsors around the world. In fact, the US was the only permanent member to vote against the resolution. And that means the rest of the 13 members, including the G7, voted yes and the UK abstained. You have essentially America isolating itself on a global stage once again, especially with the Middle East. And we know the Arab world won't forget this. Their romantic and economic relations have been damaged more or less forever, right? We already have the Arabs boycotting American brands. No one's heading to Starbucks. No one's heading to McDonald's over there. You also have Saudis flying all over the world looking really pissed off with Washington. The message coming out of Jordan, a US ally, is also very dire. America's undying support for Israel is going to torpedo any influence left in the region. And this is very important. The message that's being sent is that Israel is acting above international law and the world is simply not doing much. We disagree with the United States on its position vis-a-vis -vis on the ceasefire. Understand how important the Middle East for the US, right? It is one of the economic linchpins that's keeping America as a global superpower, as a financial giant. Oil is still priced in US dollars. The petrol dollar is still being propped up by all the oil producers there, including Saudi Arabia and the UAE. But all that is going to change in the years to come. Now, after all the dust settles, we can start to see the Arab world transact in alternative currencies in a very big way. If we look at the global energy landscape, production is still being controlled by the Middle East. America's latest adventure in South America isn't really working well. We have Venezuela threatening to invade Guyana, and that could affect oil production there. US sanctions could return them, boom, production could collapse once again. But if we look at oil production from just the United Emirates, we have production capacity increasing fast. They plan to go from 3 million barrels a day to 5 million by 2027. So just imagine if they decide to price a good portion away from the good old dollar, then the dollar will be in trouble. The Middle East will still be the world's global power in energy. They can't challenge the US military, but they can definitely undermine America using economics. It's not impossible. So now you would think America can see the obvious, right? If the writing's on the wall, the smart thing to do is to de-escalate. And at this point, only the United States can rein in Israel. But instead of pulling back, the US might be planning for further escalation in the region. Remember all the Houthi attacks on Israeli ships? Well, Joe Biden is considering pulling the trigger. US is in talks with Gulf allies on military action against Houthis. America is considering dealing with the attacks on the Red Sea. The problem with this is the entire region is a powder keg in a burning room. It doesn't take much to push the region into a bigger conflict. We have the Houthis flying barrages of missiles against commercial ships and the USS Kani destroyer. This is no joke, guys. The longer Biden denies the ceasefire, this endless loop of escalation and retaliation is not going to stop. So things are not looking good at all. There's also a bunch of voices in Washington calling for Biden to respond to the Houthi attacks. We have former Middle East commanders and admirals calling for a show of force. They believe that a lack of strong response is an invitation for Iranian proxies to keep hammering away. But the solution to this is quite a simple one. If you accept the UN ceasefire, the fighting will stop. And if we zoom over to the Israeli side, things aren't any better as well. We have Netanyahu now warning Hezbollah up north in Lebanon. He has threatened to turn Beirut and southern Lebanon into Gaza 2.0 if Hezbollah attacks directly. And here's how precarious US influence is globally. There's a war in Ukraine that's far from over. The Senate has already refused to give Zelensky additional money while the Russians are wrapping up their military action. And if things blow up in the Middle East, we are going to see a tsunami of war spending that Congress absolutely needs to pass. They will likely just separate it out of the $100 billion package and just fast-track it through the House, right? Fast-track it to Congress. 
and that's just a financial disaster. The diplomatic fallout is already happening with China making some really interesting statements. And this is important because it's a rallying cry by Beijing to get the Middle East attention. Condoning the continuation of fighting while advocating prevention of spillover of the conflict is self-deceiving. All this shows once again is what double standard is. We are starting to see a complete isolation of America in this crisis. Read the subtext of the message guys. When China sees double standards, this can extend to a whole range of issues beyond just the conflict. This can apply to financial sanctions as well. And you can bet this is yet another nail in the coffin for US hegemony, at least in the Middle East. And of course, Russia isn't far behind in taking some shots at America, right? Putin himself is now mocking the Western financial system. During a business conference in Moscow, Putin has flipped the script and is embracing the Western sanctions on Russia as a victory. According to him, economic isolation from the West was only helping Russia become a new growth center as the West is falling behind. So where is all this new surge of confidence coming from? Maybe it's coming from the recent GDP numbers that are coming out of Moscow. GDP is set to grow by 3.5% this year, rebounding from a 2.1% contraction in 2022. Now, if that comes true, it means that the sanctions have utterly failed to cripple the Russian economy. And this is a big disaster for the US because we have more or less reached peak sanctions. They have thrown all the spaghetti on the wall and nothing seems to stick for long. And the next report I'm going to share also confirms the financial sanctions aren't really working. This is from Bloomberg, the mainstream of the mainstream. So if they're admitting this, it kind of shows you the state of the economic war today. How Russia punched an $11 billion hole in the West oil sanctions. Moscow's monthly income from oil exports is greater now than before. And this highlights the failure of measures to curb its war chest. Over the past few months, the West has been trying to ramp up the oil sanctions on Russia. If you cut away oil revenues, then yes, Russia's economy will definitely collapse. But they are now facing two big problems. They can't set a lower bar on the price cap because Russia will simply divert supply away to China at a discount or cut production even further. And considering we are moving towards a recession, the West can't afford any new oil shocks here. Now it's true that oil revenues from Russia are going to come down in December. The price of euros has fallen under $60, so earnings are going to take a hit during Q4 this year. But it's not really because of Western sanctions, but because global demand is falling, we are moving towards a global recession. But just like any other export, you also have to consider the production cost of the commodity. Russia has some of the lowest cost bases in the world. According to the Federal Reserve itself, the marginal cost of producing oil in Russia is $5 to $10 a barrel. That's almost on par with Saudi Arabia. US cost production, on the other hand, is anywhere from $30 to $50 a barrel. It's the US that needs higher oil prices to keep pumping out. So unless the West drops the price cap all the way down to $10 a barrel or the global economy effectively collapses, Russian profits will still flow. I'm just doing basic math here. Economics 101. And that leaves the West with enforcing sanctions to ensure Russia is selling below the price cap. But even that isn't working very well. If we analyze the cargoes of Russian oil loaded this year, it's evident that the reliance on G7 vessels is going down. Russian vessels have done 413 loadings this year, with nearly 800 coming from shadow vessel fleets. That means 70% of cargoes loaded can be sold above the oil price cap if needed. And that's why Russian revenues can rise when the price of crude goes up as well. It's not just limited to the $60 cap. So we can kind of understand why Russia is so hyped up today. They've effectively sanctioned proof themselves. But let's talk about Argentina for a bit because battle lines are now being drawn there as well. This is a really important topic because come January 2024, it will be the BRICS 10 and not the BRICS 11. It's getting clearer and clearer that Malay's new government is not going to join the bloc. His new foreign affairs minister has made a big declaration that BRICS is out. She wrote just five words on Twitter, translated it means, we will not join BRICS. So don't be surprised come January the 1st, Argentina is more or less officially out. Now I find this a really flawed move and it's evident that Argentina is moving closer and closer towards the West. I've no idea what Millet is thinking but he apparently sees little value in joining the bloc. Now maybe I'm wrong but I kind of bet something went down during his visit to the United States. And this is after China told him it would be a serious mistake to cut ties with Beijing. However, Millet is trapped. He has said many times that he doesn't want to work with communists, 
but he probably doesn't have a choice. Argentina has a big inflation crisis, a currency disaster is coming, and a ton of debt. If China gets cut away, it's effectively game over. China accounts for 10% of Argentine exports and a quarter of their imports. There's a lot of trade at stake here, but once again, I want to focus on the imports. A lot of that trade is being done using the Chinese yuan, not the US dollar, and this is a very important point. Argentina has a big trade deficit problem. They have been exporting far less than what they have been importing. The latest trade deficit comes in at over 450 million US dollars. And this means they are burning more foreign currency than what they take in. Remember, Argentina can't print dollars, so the only way to survive is to export more stuff to earn those dollars. Or Millet can just use the existing swap line with China to exchange peso for yuan, and then use the yuan to buy Chinese imports. That's why turning your back on BRICS now isn't a good idea. It's awful timing, especially when you're trying to tear down your central bank and dollarize your economy, right? And if you didn't know yet, Argentina's inflation rate is well above 100%. I think it's near 140% or so, but it's about to get worse. From Bloomberg, Argentina limits banks' dollar holdings as devaluation looms. Millet is now clamping down on how much dollars banks can hold because a shocking currency devaluation is coming. The Argentine peso might collapse another 44% against the dollar. This is horrible news because now more pesos will be needed to buy dollars. It's great if you're a landowner, if you own gold or you own a ton of assets like real estate. But if you're the average Joe, your savings will get inflated away. Argentina's devaluing the currency to manage their debt, boost exports, and shrink the trade deficits. However, this destroys any savings in pesos. This is a perfect way to force the country into using dollars. But I need to repeat my question once again. Where are those dollars going to come from? Whether Argentina uses dollars, gold, seashells, or pesos, they need to increase exports to the world. And that's why breaking away from bricks might not be the best idea now. You're cutting yourself away from a huge market. So we can see once again how political choices are affecting economics. What's concerning is how the world is breaking apart into sides, right? It's fast becoming either you're siding with the West or you're siding with the multipolar world. Argentina is clearly making a big shift to align itself with the United States, with Israel and the rest of the democracies. Exiting BRICS is of course a slap in the face to China. I mean there will be consequences, right? If you align so closely with America, China could always pull away their yuan lifeline to Argentina. It's an $18 billion life draft Argentina is clinging on to to pay down their debts from the IMF and to finance their imports. There are just so many questions left hanging in the air. Maybe Malay is moving closer to America to get another IMF loan. Maybe that's it. Remember, the US is the biggest shareholder in the institution. If Argentina wants to revive the IMF loan, they need the US on their side. Any resolution from the IMF needs to have 85% of votes in favor. And guess who has the veto power once again? The United States. They hold 17% of the voting power, so if they give a thumbs down, any discussion is effectively over. So it's largely about economics once again. In 2024, I think we'll begin to see East versus West escalate even further. The real fireworks will begin once Saudi Arabia, Iran, and the UAE joins BRICS. But let me know what you think in the comments below. When will the US finally accept a ceasefire? And is Argentina really breaking away towards the West? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.